Okay, here we have a uh, standard Samsung S6 with uh, glass front and glass back. And you can see here that this unit is bulging the battery. The battery needs to be changed, so I've ordered one online. And now the question is how to swap it out. What you have to be careful of is this back glass, uh, sorry, this back piece is glass. So what I'm going to use is a, uh, oh, sorry, and you can also see here that uh, it's gummy. There's a uh, basically a gum line around the outside here that... Um, uh, is what is uh, sticking the glass to the uh, to the back here, this adhesive. So what you want to do is loosen it up with heat and that is what I'm going to use this uh, lovely Wagner um, uh, heater for. And uh, then I'm going to use a number of tools. I could use, you know, a pry tool, but in this case I'm going to try just for fun to use uh, just a, a simple credit card effectively. Uh, see if we can pry it off. So let's take a look. So I'm going to start with the heat on low. Um, and um, that's pretty warm and I'm just going to move it around. What you want to do is heat it evenly and don't overheat it. So it, the adhesive is only on the edge, it is not in the middle so you don't have to worry about the middle. And let's see what we get here. So I'm just going to concentrate on this top area, or the bottom area I should say here for a bit and then we'll just see if we can get this off without shattering it. If it shatters, well, that's just what you have. It probably doesn't make too much difference because most people put a cover on their phone so it's not the end of the year. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Now, I should have gloves to do this. I don't. So I'm just going to slide around and you can hear, oh yeah, you can hear that adhesive just coming off nicely. Oh yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so it's a little stiff there. So I'm going to heat this up here again because I just assume not break the glass. All right, that's probably enough. I just have this on low on this Wagner heater, but um, this heater, by the way, is about thirty dollars at uh, Home Depot. You can buy them cheaper, get them for 20 You don't need a very good one. Buy the cheapest one you can for this type of job. So let's see what we get here. Yeah, that's toasty. So I should have gloves on, but as I said, I don't. So there we go. That's coming off. That's coming off. Can I get it all the way off, or do I have to heat it again? Um, oh, I can get it all the way off. Isn't that nice? Okay. So now let's try to twist this off of it without breaking it because that didn't quite take at the end here. This little, there we go. Look at that. Beautiful. So, there we go. Okay, so now we need uh, to remove these 13 Phillips screws all the way around. Uh, the problem with it is they aren't just tiny, they're microscopic tiny, so you need one microscopic jeweler's sized uh, Phillips head screwdriver to get these out. So I'm just going to do this and uh, this is really much more difficult than it looks. Some of these are really stuck in well so you might want to apply some heat as well uh, to see if that will loosen up any adhesive that's on them. Let's see if there is an adhesive on them. Sometimes they uh, they put a yeah an adhesive on so that they uh, stay in better. They don't come out. Go. No, I don't see any adhesive on that one, so uh, I guess not. But anyway, as you can see, they're not just tiny, they're microscopic tiny. So, so I'm going to remove all 13 of these screws, and then I'll come back in a minute, and um, we'll show you how to take the uh, mid-frame off, which is the, uh, the, you know, basically the edge, and the battery comes out from the front. Okay, so I couldn't get one of these screws to come out, specifically this one. So what I did was, very carefully, I drilled it which is um, quite a risky venture. Um, but yeah, it does work, of course, just to drill out the head. The uh, screws, in this case, the heads in particular are very soft. This one was stuck. Uh, apparently I stripped it. Uh, even with the enormous amount of pressure I applied to it, it's still, yeah, what it is. So then what I did is I heated it up again, took the heat gun, heated the unit up, and then took my lovely credit card, slid it along until it popped, and bingo, it just popped out. So you can see, or maybe you can't see, but it's very hard. It's right there. 
there is a screw still there. And uh, when it goes back in, it'll just fit into the slot. It simply won't pin it down, but it will stop it from shifting back and forth. And that, unfortunately, is about the best I can do with it. So now, to uh, replace the battery, uh, what we do is pop this clip off, and the battery just falls out. Okay, so our uh, replacement battery finally showed up. Um, it says Samsung, I'd put money to knock off, although I'm not positive of that. I did order it out of Ontario for about $7 uh, off of uh, eBay. It showed up in a few days. Um, so uh, perhaps it's not. Let's actually, just, let's just see if it is. Um, and the way you can tell if it's a knockoff, well, one of the ways is to see if the serial number is the same. And yeah, you can see that these serial numbers are the same, which means these are knockoffs, which is not good, but uh, for $7, I don't expect a whole lot. Okay, so let's put this back together, and it is a little different than you might expect. Uh, the first thing uh, is if you um, did what I did on one of these, I slid the um, uh, the micro the um, speaker out, and what I needed to use was a little pin to pry underneath the screen and pop that back in. So that's back in there now, that's nice and happy. So that's the first thing. Second thing is uh, you just sort of rebuild it in reverse order at this point, but um, uh, again, it's a little bit different than you might expect, so let's just go through it. So uh, pop this in, pop the battery in. Uh, this clip, uh, I have to move a little bit north of where it wants to be, apparently, to get it to clip, and boom, there it is. I can tell it's happy. Um, uh, that seems to fit in nice. It seems to be clipped in nice. Uh, normally, at this point, I would power it up, but I'm not going to. If you were uh, doing this uh, for the first time, I'd suggest you put the chassis, uh, the mid-frame on, mid-frame chassis on in your hand, power it up and just make sure everything works, but I'm pretty confident it's all going to work. So let's um, let's pop this in now. So that's on. Uh, you start at the bottom because if you don't, it doesn't really go on. If you, if you try to start at the top, uh, you'll find it that, that there's a bump you can't get over. Put the, uh, put the unit on from the bottom uh, to the top. The, the thing that's really important here is to make sure that this is lying flat. If it's not, there's something wrong and you need to deal with it. So you can see here, I have a bump and I need to fix that, so I'm going to fix that. I don't know what it is. But, oh, there we go. There's some, some, no, I don't know what that is. Let's figure that out. So I'm going to start at the bottom here, pop that, and then there we go. Okay, that's happy. You heard that clip in. That's very nice. Okay, now uh, really the last thing that's uh, critical here is making sure that when you put the screws in, if they're not in perfectly flat, that you get them out. So start at one side and work your way around. Don't tighten them up all the way. Tighten them up loosely, if that makes sense. Just get a few turns on them uh, until they're sort of in tight. And the reason is, um, as small and as tight as these things are, there still are tolerances. And uh, that means if you tighten up all the ones at the bottom really hard, you'll, uh, well, for one thing, you'll put a lot of pressure on the screen that probably shouldn't be there. You might crack it. And secondly, the, um, uh, the ones at the top might be off, uh, you know, a hundredth of a millimeter and have, you might have trouble screwing them in. So just screw them in loosely to start with, just sort of get them started and then go back and crank them down. Uh, they don't, you don't need to put a lot of pressure on them, but you do need them to be solid. Um, and the big thing to note here is that if any of these are not in uh, flat, so not in so that there's, you know, so there'd be a bump here. For instance, these two at the bottom, you can't see this, but these two I haven't put in all the way. They're just in a little bit. Um, I'll tighten them up in a minute, but say that's as far as I could get them for some reason. Um, I need to get those out because this is glass and it will simply uh, break when you try to uh, reattach it. So let's just put this on. Okay, once you've got all the screws started, once again, take a look at the edge, make sure that there's nothing, looks like it's bulging a bit there, yeah, just not screwed down tight, you can see that that screw's not in all the way, which is good, uh, but it does feel flat, it does feel good, uh, I'll power this up at this point for fun, there we go, I'm going to let that, I'm going to keep working on it while it's powering up, um, Okay, all of those feel good. Okay, then just take the back, and you'll notice that it still has the gum on it. So what you want to do is put that on, press it on starting from the bottom to the top, making sure it shifts in there nice. It will not click in, uh, because there's nothing to click in. And just make sure that there's no bumps or anything that's 
particularly nasty there. There you go. Once that's done, you want that adhesive to reconnect. Uh, so the easiest way to do that again is with the heat gun. So let's just do that with the heat gun. And just like when you took it off, you need to make sure that the heat gun is applied evenly around the edges and a little bit in the middle too. But the uh, the key here is not to get put too much heat in one area and either warp or um, crack the glass. Glass does not like being does not like uneven heating. So let's go around. Okay, that's probably enough. Uh, and then I should have gloves, uh, but I don't have any uh, handy. So I'm just going to use this with my fingers. Quickly push it down. Try to squish it in. But once this is done, I'll make sure that this is in a case. A uh, typical cover, I should say. And that will make sure that this stays, well, sealed is probably not the right word. Uh, it certainly will never be as good as the factory, but it will be okay. I also like to do the same thing on the front. Because uh, I want that goo on the front to re-stick. Same deal, squishing both the front and the back together. Just squishing the hell out of it. But trying not to do it too unevenly. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good job to me. This all looks pretty smooth. I don't see any uh, anything that looks unpleasant. The phone works. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.